over the past few years, we've all seen some profound changes in the oil and gas industry that have taken us to the point where we're witnessing unprecedented production and activity levels in fields, frankly, that a number of companies had written off as unprofitable even a few years ago. But regardless of the activity and the oil field economics, what hasn't changed is the fact that oil and gas, and particularly field operations, is a location-based, data-driven business. So when we talk about location and, and operation, uh, operating areas specifically, there are a number of different constraints or realities that make planning and execution for field operations extremely complex. And these issues range from having accurate views of what's happening in the asset, the people, the pipe, the lease boundaries, the wells, having the right mobility solutions in order to enable our field workers so that they can uh, do their work as they travel from field office um, out, uh, into, out to where they're going um, in the asset area looking at optimized routes and being able to configure them safely and also efficiently to allow them to do their work moving again from field office to supply yard and then to well or facility. And then the safety and environmental objectives that we have when it comes to responsible operatorship and not to mention the planning and collaboration that comes into play when we're dealing with multiple locations and different types of functions that come into play in order to plan and execute these complex projects. So companies then that can align their project planning to these distinct realities and constraints to their given operating areas, but also use technology in order to take advantage of the vast amounts of field data that are available, it can not only drive enhanced location intelligence, which we spend a lot of time talking about, but they can also provide a digital platform for organizations to begin to capture tangible and measurable outcomes in the course of, of executing their operations. Things like TRIR when it comes to safety, LOE reduction, your production goals, cycle time and waste reduction coming into play as well. So tangible metrics then that, uh, that our operators uh, measure success by. And if we can provide that digital platform then that, that takes that data it's aligned to the realities that we have in our given operating area and we're actually capturing value, then what we're doing at that point is actually dig transforming digitally our operations to create competitive organizations, enhancing shareholder value, and enabling our stakeholders to make the case for continued CapEx and OpEx investment year over year to drive the exploration, development, and production activities. So the reason why this is important for GIS and really the opportunity for GIS lies in the very nature of our geospatial solutions. They're location-based, they're data-driven, and they're configurable. And that configurable aspect is incredibly important, again, when we go back and we think about our operating areas. If you take the lower 48, no two operating areas are exactly the same. The Permian Basin out in West Texas has unique attributes that, uh, that make operating there um, um, unique to, to West Texas. Compare that to the Marcellus Shale, which operators are concerned with some of the same outcomes, but you have air, things like bonded roads and blackout dates, which have to be factored into planning your routes and drive times for your field workers. And then you couple that also with the Bakken, which has to factor their planning and execution around the, very, the extremely difficult winters that they have. And how do you continue operations and production when you're dealing with sub-zero climates? So it's, it's those types of things that, that come into play that have to be configured around. So for GIS then, in providing a solution, a configurable solution that again is, is, is based on where we're operating and it is field level data, we do provide executives with the answer of where, but because of the breadth and depth of what we can offer, we can also begin to work with our executives to provide the what and the how around creating competitive, safe, and sustainable operations. So let's take an example of what this would actually look like and dive back into the Permian Basin that I mentioned just a few moments ago. The Permian Basin, as everyone knows, is seeing unprecedented levels of activity as, as operators continue to drill, complete, and maintain production across the entirety of that asset area. 
Well, one of the main issues, one of the key issues that, that, uh, that folks there have become increasingly concerned about is with the surge in traffic is a corresponding uptick in traffic accidents and safety incidents that are taking place because of the highway system there that frankly is just inadequate in order to handle the massive volumes of activity going on. So the question then for operators is how can they begin to better understand what's happening in the asset area? What kind of a tool can be deployed, created and deployed to better visualize and monitor the asset so that we understand metrics like drive time, but that we can also understand traffic, not just our own, but our competitors as well. And then if we can visualize and monitor then, can we layer in some tools or, or a solution there that will help us optimize coordination and then ultimately operationalize so that we can not only hit the safety objective, but then perhaps begin to think about some other broader business objectives as well. The cost angle, trying to track plan against actual and, and begin to try to capture efficiencies beyond the safety question that is, is paramount. So my colleague, Scott Newless, is going to illustrate what a GIS enabled fleet management tool would look like in order to address those priorities, objectives, and then the Permian realities that, uh, that operators are facing. Scott? To identify ways we can mitigate safety risks and increase operational efficiencies, we first need to visualize and monitor our assets, resources, and activities. Starting with Acre's position, we can see just how spread out our assets in the Permian are. Layering in employee and contractor locations, we get a good idea of the vast distances our workers travel every day. Adding the locations of our work orders, we can identify which sites need to be visited in order to keep our operations up and running smoothly. Now, with so many moving pieces, it can be challenging enough to get the right people with the right tools to the right locations safely. But there's more to the story than just our activities. When we focus in on an area, we can see how all of these challenges become magnified by the offset operator activity. Increased traffic from construction, drilling, and fracking operations can lead to crowded and dangerous roads as operators compete for resources, supplies, and space. So, as an operator, we need to focus and invest in the safety of our employees, our contractors, and the communities in which we operate. So what can we do to uh, address some of these challenges and uh, mitigate or coordinate our, uh, our assets out here? Well, first we need a plan that optimizes and prioritizes work in a way that reduces the number of miles driven and the time spent on the road. Each work order has unique considerations. The skill set required to do the work, times the location can be visited, the uh, assets that uh, require certain uh, types of uh, work here also need to be taken into account. So what we can do is take all of this information and load it into our enterprise route management solution. Here uh, in our route planner web app, we can create a, a signed stop at each work order location. We can then use the under, uh, underlying routing engine to generate an optimized set of routes that visits each location in sequence. This is the brains of the coordination process, assigning the right work to the right people in the right order according to business rules and priorities. And so now that we have our plan, we need to communicate it to our workers in the field. In this case, each driver receives an email outlining their activities for the day, as well as a, a link to their prescribed work plan. In Navigator, each driver sees their optimized route along with each stop in sequence. Turn-by-turn -turn directions and voice guidance will assist the driver along the route, ensuring they remain focused on the road. When the driver arrives at a location, they can view information about their work and document any work done during their visit. Using a smart form, workers can capture information quickly and efficiently, leaving less room for error. Once the work is complete, it's back in the truck and on to the next job. As each worker communicates where they are and what they've done, people back in the office are able to track this information in real time. So now that we've successfully coordinated our workforce, 
we can take all of this information and operationalize it. As data comes in from the field, we can summarize it a variety of different ways. Let's take a look at a summary of reported safety hazards in our area. This dashboard is configured to show important safety metrics like the incident rate and hazards reported over time so we can ensure that we are in compliance with company safety policies and regulations. We can easily see that the number of hazards reported this week are down from last week, and there's one hazard in particular we should be concerned with. For more detail, we can filter on a specific hazard type, see where those reports are on a map, see what was done to mitigate those risks, and look at uh, in-depth description of each hazard. We can also monitor the operational efficiencies of our workforce. This dashboard is configured to show key metrics like travel times, distances, and time spent on location. We can view metrics for an entire fleet, or we can compare the routes of individual workers to see which ones take longer and cover more distance. Using information collected in the field, we can compare or see, track the progress, progress of our workers throughout the day. For each worker, we can see the completed work and compare that to the optimized plan that we created. On the left, we see all the scheduled work orders listed in the optimized sequence. And on the right, we see all of the completed work orders listed in the order in which they were submitted. Through this, we can easily track variance in either the work completed, or we can see if the time it took to complete work actually differed from the uh, planned time. And so with this information, we can actually uh, allocate our resources more effectively in the future. So through our ability to visualize, monitor, and coordinate our assets, resources, and activities, along with tools like enterprise route management and configurable mobile applications, we can intelligently manage our fleet and operationalize the data and information we collect into safer, more cost-effective programs. Thanks, Colin. Scott. So summing up, location intelligence, field-level insights driven by data, mobility solutions, operator priorities and objectives, and Permian-specific complexity. By bringing all of these elements together, then, our fleet management tool can provide the visualizing and monitoring necessary to optimize coordination and then enable, then enable the, our operators and stakeholders then to hit their targets, to hit their safety targets or optimization targets and their cost targets as well. So because of the configurable nature of GIS and the fact that it is location-based and it is driven by real-time data coming out of the field, GIS is uniquely positioned to enable organizations to provide a platform then for competitive, safe, and sustainable operations. But in fact, with GIS, when you really think about it, what it does is it provides the answer to the question around really what is digital transformation. Thank you. Thank you.